everybody to Bedbug TV. I'm your host, Jeff White. And in today's episode, I wanted to talk to everybody about bed bugs, kissing bugs, and Chagas disease. I was recently contacted by some members of Texas A&M University that were asking me to possibly distribute some information on kissing bugs and Chagas disease. And it brought up an interesting point because I have received questions in the past about bed bugs and Chagas disease, and people have asked me, you know, is there any ability or do you think there will be any ability for bed bugs to be able to transmit Chagas disease in the future? People ask that question because bed bugs and kissing bugs are distantly related. They're in the same order of insects, which are called true bugs. And people have said, you know, well, if they're distantly related, do you think that bridge could potentially happen? The bottom line when it comes to bed bugs is that they have not been shown to have the ability to transmit any diseases to date. And when it comes to bed bugs, there are a lot of problems that we need to be concerned about when it comes to bed bugs, about the things we know they can do, that I'm not going to sit here and hypothesize whether I think it's possible in the future. What I know is that they can't, and for now, that's all I'm going to worry about. Is it possible, you know, 10, 20, 100 years down the road, 200 years? I have no idea. I'm going to worry about what we do know and what we know we have to deal with now. And so I can't really comment. I mean, I, I not something that I would be concerned about if you were watching this video. They can't, and that's not going to happen anytime soon. So, you know, I think we can move forward from there when it comes to bed bugs. Now, in relation to kissing bugs and Chagas disease, I thought I would share some interesting information that I got from the flyer that I was given by Texas A&M about kissing bugs in Texas. And what it talks about is the incidence of kissing bugs and Chagas disease potentially moving north. Um, we've always known that kissing bugs have existed along the U.S.-Mexico border, and reports of Chagas disease have come from those areas. And the bottom line, though, is that the incidence of kissing bugs and Chagas disease in other areas of the country isn't really known because it hasn't been tracked very widely. The estimate in these brochures that I was received was that anywhere from 300,000 to potentially 1 million cases of Chagas disease could exist in the United States every year, which is obviously an eye-opening number, especially for something that hasn't, you know, doesn't receive a lot of attention. Now, in regards to what Chagas disease do, there's really two different forms. There's an acute form and a chronic form. And it actually, when I was reading these brochures, reminded me a lot of Lyme's disease. That's something we deal with here in the Northeast and in New Jersey very regularly. And the acute form is kind of, it, it's tough to, to characterize. And that's why I think a lot of times it's probably not tracked in that it, it sometimes can, can exhibit similarly to a cold, you know, aches, pains, that kind of stuff. And sometimes you may have no symptoms at all, which is a lot like Lyme's disease. And the chronic form, though, which actually 30% of the people who do or, you know, transmitted Chagas disease to them develop the chronic form of Chagas disease. So only 30% do. But the chronic, you know, portion of it is what we need to be a little bit more concerned about. Those are the more serious symptoms. And they may not, you know, demonstrate in a human for years and sometimes even decades after the original bite happens. Now, in regards to the kissing bugs, you know, what they do is actually they function a little bit similarly to bed bugs. What they're going to do is they're going to look for, you know, a blood meal. They, they feed on blood. And they're going to respond to carbon dioxide and things like that. And what they're going to do is they're going to come to a house and they're going to enter that house. And they're typically going to feed on you while you're sleeping because they do like to feed around the eyes and around the mouth. Obviously, these bugs are pretty big. You know, they're not like bed bugs. They're much bigger than bed bugs. And that's very difficult for them to get, you know, food while you're awake. You know, a large bug like that's not going to land on your mouth. You're not going to, like, not know it. Um, now, here's a yummy fact for you. How they actually transmit disease, or one way they transmit it, is that when they bite you, right after they bite you, they tend to go to the bathroom in the same area that they just fed. And what they do is they actually defecate in the area of the open wound that they just created. And that's actually how the disease is transmitted. It's found inside their bodies and transmitted through defecation. Yummy, yum, yum. Now, they can also transmit the disease, though, if they're consumed. Obviously, as a human, we're not going to consume kissing bugs. But where I think the biggest risk for kissing bugs could potentially be, and that's, you know, what I read from these brochures, and I agree, is with canines, dogs. You know, we get into a lot of our rural communities. There's a lot of dogs that live outside 90%, 100% of the time. They have kennels. They have dog houses. You know, here in New Jersey, I'm in a, an urban section in New Jersey. You don't typically see things like that. But when you get into your rural communities, it's very common. Um, and so those dog houses that are open constantly that these bugs could potentially be attracted to and then feed on those dogs may be the biggest risk factor right now. 
Um, Because obviously dogs can become sick with this just like humans can. And so that's really an area of focus. In regards to the bugs themselves, you know, they're being found right now in 28 states. Um, As you, you know, move north, it's obviously less common that you find them. And they're trying to track exactly what the incidence of Chagas disease is at this point. And that's really what this is all about. It's to inform everybody that these bugs are out there. You know, not something I would go out and, and run around and scream about and be super concerned about. But it is something that's out there. They're trying to determine exactly what the prevalence is and if they are spreading, where they're spreading to. And hopefully get some good, solid information out there. So if you have any interest on kissing bugs, I suggest going out to the Texas A&M website. You can Google it, search it. We'll also put a link up. Go read about them, be informed on them. Uh, And it's just some interesting stuff to keep an eye on as we move forward. So if you have any questions on bed bugs, obviously I'm the guy to contact, jeff.white at bedbugcentral.com. If you have any questions about kissing bugs, you can send me an email. I may forward it along to somebody else to answer. Or, of course, you can go to Texas A&M and look on their site. And there is an email address on there that we will also put up that you can reach out and get some questions answered. All right, everybody. Hope to see everybody soon enough.